For the longest time, it has been said there were two sides to Tupac. On the one hand, he was a sensitive poet, thespian, and lover of literature. But on the other hand, there was the thug life persona, spitting into the camera and fighting gang members. Over the decades since his death, those closest to him have described him in many different ways. Some supporting the softer side of Park, while others confirming that he was in fact gangster. In a recent Vlad TV interview, Michael Jai White spoke about the friendship he had with Tupac, how they used to play pool together. He basically said Tupac's gangster persona was an act that went too far. Michael is an actor himself. He was in the Tyler Perry movie, Why Did I Get Married? Soul Food and the miniseries Insecure Due North, to name a few. He said that Tupac's acting roles affected him in his personal life and it was staying in character that killed him. He also said that Tupac only acted gangster when black people were around. Tupac played the role of Roland Bishop in the movie Juice. Bishop was part of a small crew with Q, Raheem and Steele. At the beginning of the film, this crew partakes in minor crimes, but eventually Bishop pushes them into getting involved in more serious crimes. He later turns against them and becomes a psychotic killer. In Above the Rim, he plays Birdie, the local drug dealer and the main antagonist of the movie. He also began filming for the movie Menace to Society, a classic film about gang violence in the hood. But he was fired because he allegedly assaulted the director on set. According to Tryon Turner, one of the stars of the movie, Tupac was having trouble getting into character and an altercation ensued. Morphin said that Tupac wasn't understanding how his character could be a Muslim gangster and demanded more of a background story. Continue watching to hear Tupac's side of the story from his own mouth. Apparently, the cast were unhappy about him holding up rehearsal and director Alan Hughes called Tupac a little bitch and asked him to step outside. After that, Tupac never returned to set. Ask me about the Hughes brothers. I was supposed to be a minister to society, right? I went and everything, they got the deal because of your boy. You know, they, they was my niggas that used to do all these videos for me. They was the niggas that was talking that you should help your black brother shit and I helped they punk ass. You know what I'm saying? And was helping them all the way. They got a little movie deal and tried to act white on me. You understand me? And thought I was going to choose a career before I choose my motherfucking principles, my manhood. So I said, okay, cool. Fire me from this hundred thousand dollar movie because I ain't gonna play no gangbanger who's a Muslim. There ain't no such thing. I refuse to play parts that don't exist. Then I leave, they fire me over the air on TV, on MTV. They say Tupac fired for threatening the director. What really happened, let me tell the world. He said, I said, you acting like a bitch. He said, you acting like a bitch. I said, well, goddamn, if I'm a bitch, smack a bitch. You feel me? He said, well, if I'm a bitch, smack a bitch. And I stepped towards him. You feel me? Feel me? So the nigga fired me, they did their little million dollar movie. I ain't sweat them the whole while they was filming the movie, even though I was in LA the whole time. Didn't touch them. Cause I ain't want nobody thinking it was because of the movie and I'm not jealous. Y'all handle y'all business, I can understand that and I can respect that no matter how much funk we got. As Soon as the movie was wrapped though, it's all good. I said, both y'all niggas get out the car, we about the box. His brother, his twin brother got out and start running. That's on my mama, he ran. Swing, twins. He ran, boom. The other brother got out, started talking shit. He walked away, I socked his punk ass and started throwing things like I'm born the box. Then, instead of fighting me like a G, he ran. Now, I can't help it if some niggas that was on the scene beat his ass for running. That was something separate, you understand me? And I can't help it if they were screaming thug life as they did it. That ain't my fault. That's just how shit went down, you understand me? But now niggas need to start living what they preaching. They want to make gangster movies, they better live a gangster life. Actors get into character in different ways. They usually research the role by speaking to real life people associated with their character, hanging out in real life settings too. They come to set ready to play their role. When the director says cut, they go home and forget about it until next time. However, some actors take their roles so seriously they commit to staying in character off set. This is called method acting. The actor becomes the character 
they are portraying and doesn't switch off. It spills over into their everyday lives. Sometimes it even affects them after they've completed the movie. There have been rumours for years that certain method actors such as Shia LaBeouf, Daniel Day-Lewis and Christian Beale are impossible to work with. Method acting has even been attributed to the death of the Dark Knight star Heath Ledger. He ended up winning an Oscar for his role posthumously. The method acting system goes back to 1909 and was created by acting teacher Konstantin Stavarovsky. This psychological system encourages actors to explore the emotional inner lives of their characters and utilize emotional memory to create a realistic performance, both verbally and physically. It was later adapted in the 1920s by Lee Strasberg and is the preferred system in Hollywood. The system encourages utilizing emotional memory and full immersion into the memory. This is called substitution plus imagination and physical senses. The actor does not play the character, they become them. This is supposed to be temporary, but many believe it can impact certain actors long term. Tupac was no stranger to playing gangster roles and that of people in the hood engaging in crime. He was capable of playing other roles though. In Poetic Justice, he played a postal worker trying to win over the affections of a love interest. According to Michael Jai White, roles such as Bishop in Juice affected Tupac off camera. He even accused Tupac of acting one way in front of white people and another way when he was around other black people, saying, it's kind of a weird thing with Tupac. We would play pool or go hang out and people would say, you know, your friend looks a lot like Tupac. Nobody ever thought it was him. And so people would, would be like, oh, that guy's not Tupac. He's, Tupac's not that goofy. He would be like just, just a different kind of dude, right? But then like we would be playing and all of a sudden he'd go back into, yeah, nigga, I'm gonna get it. And I'm like, somebody black must have walked into the room. But yep, there it is. <laughs> because the side of him that I knew was so different from the whole gangster thing. Imagine if Al Pacino kept in Scarface mode for the purposes of other people around him, he said. One of the theories that people have is that after he did Juice, he kind of became Ab Bishop. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm saying. This dude was a natural actor. Right. There like imagine Henry Winkler staying in the Fonz character. You know what I mean? He could switch into that. And I think that's, you know, what took him out. Muta Napoleon Bill addressed this in an Art of Dialogue interview, recalling one time when Tupac bumped into Michael and wasn't friendly towards him at all. He had just gotten out of jail and was super paranoid, especially because he had been shot five times just before going in and heard various diss tracks from other rappers claiming to be behind the shooting. When Michael bumped into him, he asked him, where the party at? Tupac took this the wrong way, believing he was trying to find out where he was gonna be later on that night and potentially give out that information to the wrong people. So he went off on him hard. According to Napoleon, Michael probably went away wondering why Tupac's demeanor changed when he saw him because just a few minutes before he was calm. It is alluded that Michael Jai probably was still holding a grudge against Tupac when he did the interview with Vlad TV. But Napoleon said it was nothing personal against Michael. It may have been someone else other than Michael who Napoleon and Tupac met that night. The person who came up to them was an up and coming actor according to Napoleon. And he was speaking as if he and Tupac didn't know who the person was. But according to Michael, he and Park were friends who hung out. So there's a little bit of discrepancy with the stories, so who knows? Michael's claims of Tupac taking his roles too far are not completely unheard of. Boys in the Hood star, Lloyd Avery II, AKA the guy who shot Ricky, is believed to have suffered this fate. He was from a middle-class background and grew up in the wealthy Viewpoint neighborhood. He attended Beverly Hills High School and his upbringing was far removed from the characters he played as an actor. He became typecast as a gangster and those were the roles he played. It is believed 
he got so involved in his portrayal of these characters that it spilled over into his personal life. Researching these roles may have involved hanging out with people in the hood, befriending real gang members and eventually getting caught up in their world. But it's believed he stayed in character long term and that this eventually led to his death. He got his big break in Boys in the Hood. And then he starred alongside Tupac in Poetic Justice. He was also in the spoof movie Don't Be a Menace While Drinking Your Juice in the Hood. And then he played Nate in the critically acclaimed movie Lockdown. And finally, G-Ride in the independent movie Shot. In 2001, soon after wrapping up the film Shot, Lloyd Avery was arrested for a double homicide and sentenced to life in prison. On the evening of September 4th, 2005, Avery was killed in his cell in Pelican Bay State Prison by his cellmate. In Juice, Tupac played the role of Bishop impeccably and from the beginning, you knew his character was going to be trouble. So, is it possible that he adopted a method acting technique? Or maybe Michael Jai was referring to the influence of Suge Knight and being affiliated with Death Row Records. In the end, he did get into an altercation with Orlando Anderson, a known gang member who many believe had something to do with his eventual death. If he wasn't hanging out with Suge and signed to Death Row, he would not have been in that position that night. Members of the Outlaws said Tupac was simply defending his homies. He was not a gangbanger. Way before he met Suge, Tupac had his own experiences with a world outside of listening to David Bowie and doing ballet. When he was in his early 20s, he was allegedly assaulted by racist cops who harassed him after stopping him for jaywalking. Really, it's happened to me. The police beat me up in the middle of the street for no reason, just simply because I cursed at him, because they were harassing me and I cursed at him. Now they beat me up. He felt so strongly about holding him accountable he took the Oakland police to court for a $10 million lawsuit. This was eventually settled out of court, for which Tupac received $42,000. His mother said that experience changed him forever, and it certainly changed his view of police officers. It got to the point where he just didn't care. Stories had been told of him spitting in their faces, and there was an incident of shooting two crooked off-duty officers in Atlanta for which he was acquitted. Then, many have said jail changed him. He came out a different person, much less trusting of others. Hence, Napoleon's story makes more sense, as opposed to Tupac being inauthentic, as Michael Jai White alluded. We have seen the way he behaved when the camera was on him, on national TV. If he was going to act a certain way in front of white people, he would have been on his best behaviour when the cameras were on him, especially while going through a court case. He was so true to being authentic, he didn't want to play a fictional role that he considered unrealistic. Hence, why he couldn't get into the role of the religious gangster they wanted him to portray on Menace to Society. Director Alan Hughes later went on to say in 2013 that Tupac would have outshone the other actors anyway, because he was, quote, bigger than the movie. Tupac actually gave Alan Hughes his first big break. He directed the music video for Tupac's song, Brenda's Got a Baby. Do you think method acting may have affected Tupac and contributed to his death, like Michael Jai White said? Was he playing a role that led to his demise and wasn't really gangster? Or do you believe he was always his authentic self and was gangster at times because of his life experiences but also had a softer, sensitive side. Thanks for watching. Share your thoughts below, like and subscribe for weekly videos, and don't forget to click the bell for more.